Hey everybody, welcome to today's show. We've got a very special show today. Um, Old School Cannabis Project is joined by good friend Mark. Mark's in the UK. Props to Mark big time but for many reasons. One, the fact he's even there with his face on camera in the fucking prohibition fucking shithole that is currently the UK unless you're prepared to fucking pay for some bullshit diagnosis and some bullshit consultation fees and get your little fucking prescription for some fucking hype mids. Um, yeah, and that you can show your show your prescription to the old bill if they fucking pull you over when you haven't even really got that shit in there because you've actually gone and bought something decent from the black market. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the show, Mark. So fucking awesome uh, to have somebody with some balls on the show as well. That's what we need in this entire thank community. Very much. And second of all, fucking thank you for being the guy who's got me the most fucking high in the UK to date. Through... <laughs> You're very welcome. Come to do it your genetics, brother. Well, as I say, through supplying me some nice fucking flour and some oils made from genetics that I've put out in the Turp Town tickets. So, yeah, it's been awesome, man, to actually have in the UK my own genetics to smoke because, you know, I bang on enough and have done for the past five years for a reason that I consider it to be the best gene pool in the world because of all timer one and his phenomenal work that he's done for decades before I even existed. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, I think it's an excellent gene pool um, with high superior to what is available in the modern gene pool. And yep. your flower and your medicine certainly proves it. So It's been a pudding. It is. So what are um, you currently making? Uh, making some of your famous, you're starting to get famous, your death oil now. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Labelling up my bottles. I've got some some oil infusing at the moment. Um, so your one source farms on Instagram, one source farms, and your death oil is tell us about that. Well it's 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 ninety five percent from your genetics. Um it's, have you ever made it previously with any other genetics? I have. It doesn't hit quite as hard if I'm honest. I was gonna say all of those recent reviews I've seen at least they're like talking about, well, they just seem, I ain't seen reviews like that before, really. So I'm just thinking, is that because of my genetics or is it because whatever? I think it is the genetics. It, I think that's it, it's a good part of the genetics, yeah. The, if I make it with any other flower, the, the recreational side of the oil is there. Don't get me wrong. The high is there from the THC, but you don't get the entourage effects like you do with your genetics. Um. I don't know whether it it's parts that others just it's don't make perfumed, but it's it's levels in comparison to any other type of flower I've used for it. The medicinal benefits of it are just incredible. Yeah. But to me, it feels like most modern weed is like really soulless in comparison. Yeah. Somebody hit me up from Australia the other day. They probably heard me say it on previous podcasts, but I haven't said it in a while. But that's what I always used to say. All this modern stuff is fucking soulless. You know, it's got no substance to it. It's, it just it's it's crap. And then mm -hmm. then the old time one gene pool, it's as I say. It's like that Heineken advert. I think it's that shitty Heineken beer, and it? it reaches parts other beers don't reach. It's the, it's like that with your flower. Now I've been anytime I'm not in the well, anytime I'm in the UK, rather, I rarely get to experience my own genetics because I don't grow in the UK. I don't mm -hmm. uh, current circumstances don't allow, and all the stuff that you see on Instagram and all the seeds and all the stuff I do is always in some other fucking country where it's just easier to do that. Yeah, so, unfortunately, when I am in the UK, then I don't have my own work to smoke, my own flower to smoke, or even often my own genetics. I certainly don't have my own flower, so I don't, as I say, I don't fucking grow it. But so then I'm having to obtain flower and things from what is available in the UK, and I've you know been around for plenty of time, and I know exactly what's in the UK, what's been around, and the type of things, and I go on a few fucking plug channels and I see the type of things people are spending mad fucking money on 
you know, just, oh, just, just absolute garbage, really, for stupid money. Um, so I'm well aware of what's out there, and I'm fucking well experienced the past 25 years of fucking everything, you know? Um, so, as I was saying, to get to the point, when I'm in the UK, don't have my genetics, and a difference in what I experienced smoking my genetics and anything else that's available, and I do mean anything else. It don't matter how well it's grown, how much money it costs, if it's not, if it's from, say, certainly post-2010 genetic gene pool, it will be inferior to anything from my gene pool, because everything of any value has certainly at that point been bred out of uh, bred out the gene pool, really, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I 100% agree. So what I'm saying is then when I get the fucking pure pleasure to experience some of my genetics and especially a nice selection grown well like yours has been, um, the difference in effects, it's, just, it's like a different fucking substance almost. It's like we're talking about a different plant or a different yeah. thing. I won't say a different drug, but a different, it's like something different, man. It's like, it really is. We're talking about something different. There is nothing in the modern era that has these effects and highs, you know, no, unless no, unless no, one hundred percent. some mind into it. But I took I took some of the flower with me um, to a social recently. And there's got a couple of it, it, it's more of a, a dabbing social um, for for me, but there's a couple of people there that love smoking flower, and they're big. Cali heads and they, they're paying their 80s and 90 pounds for an eighth in a pack. And I said, yeah, just 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 have a couple of bongs of this each. And he had two bongs each. And their words were, I have never been as high in my entire life. Yeah. And it is and that is crazy that you say that because I actually put that in a post about hearing this from you the other day. I actually posted a bong hit, a bowl, certainly is far fucking superior to a big dab of anything from modern era. I don't give a fuck. I'm not trying to offend anybody. I've got people, I've got the utmost respect for uh, extractors, for example, in the UK, and I'm going to mention some of them in this podcast to give them the fucking total props they deserve for being great at what they do and being awesome people too. Um, but you're limited, you know, no matter who you are and what you're doing in any field of cannabis you're limited by the genetics that's it your fucking limiting factor is yeah. the genetics so anybody doesn't matter if you've got the greatest equipment and setup and knowledge and you've got the most fucking highest thc percentage allegedly anyway fucking modern flower um at your disposal you are not going to produce something that will get me as high for as well and as for as long as this old school flower bong hit. It just won't. No, it just fucking won't. Definitely. Definitely and that no. is just some pure experience. That's not knocking nobody, yep. anybody. You are just purely stuck and limited by the fact you're using modern day genetics. And if when you do switch over to some of you know, when you run through a few packs and find some excellent fucking unique keepers that'll be yours and no one else has got as well. Um if you're looking for new flavors and which all extractors are, um yep. then you're going to find a new level of potency that lasts so much fucking longer and hits so many different receptors. As I say, it's a complete package. It's like reaching parts modern fucking cannabis don't, you know? And as I said, what you've given me recently, it has just got me so much nicer than anything else else, you know? And not only that, so much fucking more motivated, more, it sparks, it sparks your brain, sparks you compared to any other shit I've been smoking. It sparks your brain, that fires your brain, that gets you thinking, gets you wanting to go outdoors. For me, I've been going to bed earlier and getting up earlier, which is better because mm -hmm. I'm not fucking like, you know, staying up to midnight or longer, trying to get high enough to go to sleep off some fucking bullshit, you know, from some modern day crap. I'm getting nicely fucking, you know, stones, body and mind, nice, relax, ready to go to sleep by fucking 10.30, you know, and I sleep well, and then I get up earlier the next day feeling more fucking refreshed and better, and I'm out walking the dog on the beach. It's, it's fucking night and day, one million percent fucking better than anything else I can get off anybody else in the UK of modern origin. No question. Definitely. Definitely. Um... Up until 
me doing your genetics, to be fair. Um, I had to consume cannabis as well as taking pharmaceuticals for my issues. Um, I broke my back about 16 years ago now and I've got nerve damage. So normally I'm I'm walking with two crutches. Um, since making and consuming everything that I do with your genetics, I'm only like that maybe twice a week now instead of every day. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. And that's the whole point, man. That is literally the whole fucking point. People got no understanding of how much better it can be. And not only that, forget all that. It's just how much more medical benefit you can receive from the uh, from the older genetics versus the modern, you know? If and you know, oh, if this modern shit was good, I'd just fucking say so, you know? Why would yeah. I not? I just would, you know? I'm not hating anybody. I say your work might be shit. And it could, but it could be a thousand times better if you just use some my genetics, which a whole fucking load of them are now, and not giving credit, which is a whole other story, which I don't even give a fuck about anymore. They're still doing my fucking work for me. They're still improving the gene pool. They're still putting out better medicine than what was available before. So they're still fucking working for me. But um, yeah, and that is all I want is for because I've always known that is the thing is where that old timer one gene pool has been so. Uh, tight, tightly held for starters by himself and others around him. But Mark, did you ever be on the UK 420 forum? Yes. Yeah. Have you been yeah. on it any particular length of time? Like, um, do you remember all time when one was alive? Yes. Yeah. I, that was sort of when I did use it, and then I come off it. To be fair, after that. Um... So you know, you know the forum, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. For a, you know, for a, well, if you've been around that time, you know that they all, <clears throat> I won't say dick rided him because he is respected all that dick rided. It was dick rided, let's say it was, but but he kind of was due it because let's face it, his legacy is incredible. Um, I'm yeah. going to say thanks to me, <laughs> that's epic, that's it, but fuck it, it's not because let's say he was the most, you know, as I was saying, it was tightly held, he held it tight. And other people, oh, if they got anything off him through some dick riding, then they'd keep that to themselves as well, you know? And like, for mm -hmm. example, the ESB. The ESB was fucking held so tight. I got that off a guy called PGT. Do you remember him, Paul Green Thumb? I got that off him one time. I held that for about a week before where it was fucking being kept, actually got nicked by the old bill, unfortunately. But things like that, they kept that super tight. But I did even have that, and I have the ESB haze. But I did lose the ESB cutting mark. That was true for never had that. But anyway, what I'm saying, they kept they keep all these things so tight. So nobody in the greater scheme of things and in the wider community has really had any experience of old timer one genetics. That's no, where I was going no. with it. It's such a small, minuscule percentage of people in the world have actually, especially before 2020, before before December 2019, when I released seeds. And going into 2020, before that period, then it was really a very, very select few. And if you hadn't been on the 420 forum, you almost probably hadn't had any no. of his genetics ever. No. So you'd never even heard of him, most people. And that's, again, you were even a, another older group that knew him from this thing called the 77 and, uh, and Overgrow back in the day. So what I'm getting at is... I came on the scene trying to tell everybody this is so much fucking levels above anything else that's out there, but it was me versus like virtually the whole inexperienced world. And now it's great to have people like yourself being able to, you know, coherently fucking uh, back me up as well for your own experience, yeah. you know? And this is once people try it, it's like you just said, then two guys that are into spending stupid money on shit Cali, um, they've never been so fucking high in their lives. No. And that's what everyone's going to fucking experience when they find some nice, nice keepers from the, the gene pool that I've put out there, you know? Even the non-keepers, though, they're better than half of the Cali stuff that's coming over. <laughs> well, you know this Fino, it's mad. You know this <laughs> Fino Hunters pack that I put out, Fino Hunters stroke town tickets, yeah? Yeah. 
that was, you could almost look on that as all the stuff that wasn't going to really be keepers. And have you seen the absolute mad fire that's come out of it over the past four years? It's ridiculous. But that is why I did keep them, for the sole fact that I knew back then, even then, when I was making that gene pool, I was like, there's nothing like any one of these plants, every one of these 60 odds, there's nothing else like them out there in the world today. Um, no. And they're so much better on certain levels than everything else that's out there today that even though they're almost like my non-keepers i'm not gonna have a chance or they weren't what i wanted to work with straight away again i still knew i couldn't like ditch that i've got to fucking keep that gene pool and put it out to everybody else because yep. you know my least good work is still the best out there and that sounds so <laughs> again that's not fucking baguette it's no, just facts. 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 <laughs> yeah and that's why I always started with. I started by putting out my least good of everything, like the first like S lines that I put out that loads of people loved and found great plants in and were like, this is fucking changed how I look at cannabis. That was like my least best ones at the time that I put out as tasters because I had idiots trying to say I didn't have skunk. So I thought I put out my least skunkiest stuff, which I know is still 10 times skunkier than anything else that's out there. And we'll see what people say. And then yeah. I released the Pheno Hunters, which is a mix. So I put a lot of good skunks in there but not all pure skunk in one pack because I wanted people to, I knew what people were going to be like. So I thought these fuckers can look through some stuff anyway and not just hand it on a plate to them. And yeah, also, also, I want the other stuff to be experienced. That's why I fucking kept them. I want it to be out there, not just, you know, in old timer one's collection in the in gathering dust. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I put out. And it's, it's yes, it's, it's just a very fucking phenomenal gene pot that's been put out. And, and we're going to see more and more, more and more. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm excited to try and find some more of the pineapple ones, to be fair, the pineapple skunks that were there. Um... I, did, I did put out something called pineapples, pineapple fuel skunk haze, and that was super pineapple. Um, you'll probably find something like that in the tip town. Yo, shout did, out yeah. to Millsy as did, well, yeah. man. I was going to say shout out to Millsy because <laughs> I sent him some seeds. So that's how you got this. Is you, you've got a cool story about them chip tabs. One, um, one second. No worries. So I sent some to Millsy in the UK. He at some point passed some on to you, like about eight seeds, I think he said, wasn't it? Yeah, there we go. The tip town tickets. So that's cool. And um, yeah, you had yeah, four yeah. males. Was it four males you got? And then tell us about the rest. One didn't pop yeah. and three females. Um, four, four males. And then I ended up one. One I had to actually get rid of early. It was. I don't know how to describe it. Was that the one you said is too, too rag? <laughs> <laughs> Rotten dead. Skunk piss with burning tires and gloss paint fumes. Yeah, you know, next time <laughs> that's the one you want to keep. <laughs> I, I should have, I know, I know, but I'd go into my room and it was just so intense. No, I that's, couldn't that's, say in there that is, that's the a oven. crime you, you're admitting to there. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and you're on camera doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but I kept the pineapple one and the, the rubber tennis ball one, and they were fire. And Mills, he's got some in a jar still right, now. So, so what have you sent me off? Is that because that was a, a fruity one? Was that the pineapple one? And then you said the one that you described it as like better than GMO. That's the most savory, skunky one. Yeah. 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 So it was just those. So you had those three. You killed one because it was too fire, and <laughs> <laughs> and you, you kept the other two, <laughs> which was still fire. <laughs> yeah, and that's what you've been putting in the death oil and stuff like that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But that is a that is a great fucking you know you've got three females, all of them banging. One of them especially nice by the sounds of it. Because that sounds, did you say paint thinner, like turpentine? Yeah. Yeah, because that is a pucker. I like that expression, man. That comes from the first mill I used, a lemon turpentine right. mill. So, yeah, the turpentine is nice. So what was it? Cat, what, say it again. What was it? <laughs> it was like rogue kill skunk oh. that a cat, a cat had come and pissed on. <laughs> and the then we're burning rubber. tires. <laughs> yeah. 
And and the turpentine. And the turpentine, yeah. Fuck. Well, I'm going to have to get some more Turptown tickets to you. And if you've got to find that one again, man. Yes, please. I will definitely be you know. Two are real nice. These two are real nice. But I'll go as far as to say you probably find even nicer in the Turp Town tickets. But this has still been, as I say, the nicest weed I've smoked in the UK since I can't remember when. Because as I said, don't matter how good you know the flower or anything else is, if it's just from this modern gene pool, it won't be making you feel as good as this. And that's all that matters. Yeah. You know, I don't give a fuck how it looks anything is purely about the effect and when when the effects are so night and day so so vastly superior it's just yeah we need we need, we need a fucking hundred people more a thousand people more like you at the minute growing more and putting it out there and just making a change on the fucking uk market because yeah the the stuff i'm seeing from the medical um dispensers Looks like garbage. Looks like shit you couldn't really sell on the street, a lot of it. Um, yeah. And then all the other stuff I see in the UK in the fucking Mylar bags is just PG yards, machine trimmed, LED, salt grown, fucking shit that they think is yeah. something amazing for some reason, you know? Yeah, uh, it's just been a, it's it's just a big flip, isn't it? It's it's Instagram weed now. Yeah. It's Rapper it's just weed. about how the packaging looks and and does the, does the bud look a certain way? Is yeah. I, I I don't believe it's about effects or medicine or feel anymore. It's just. Oh, but I've got look at this in this bag here. Look, cool, <laughs> and that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like it. They've they fucked Europe really. When I think about it, Barcelona's the same. Holland's the same. When you go to any shops and that. You see mad prices, 150 euro eights and shit. Yeah. Maybe more now even. I don't know. Fucking. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, there'll be some that are more, to be fair. But you've been getting some anyway. You've been getting great fucking reviews, most importantly, from the UK people that have been trying the flour and taking the oil. The oil is fucking beautiful, man. I really like, you know. I drink a bottle of it. Um, after Milsey, Milsey got me on that when he said, cause he's like, oh yeah, I drink a bottle of it. I was like, fuck it. Well, if Milsey done it, I am too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I had a bottle and yeah, you feel so nice, man. You know, it is a, it, I wouldn't advise anybody who's not a fucking mental one like me and Milsey to drink a bottle the first time, especially. But, no, definitely not. <laughs> but that's, not that, 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 that's not the way forward for most people. Um, <laughs> Definitely just trying it on the safe side, on the light side of one pipette. What do you know yeah. what I noticed about yours? It's quick. It's quick um, absorbed or hitting. It, it's much quicker than just taking like a standard RSO or something. Infusing it with yeah. MCT definitely makes it more bioavailable quickly. Yeah, it does. That's the thing. It makes it more bioavailable. And I think it bypasses some of your digestion system. Okay, because it's in the MCT. I, I, I will have to double check. I'm sure that's that is why it kicks in quicker because you don't have to fully digest it. Yeah, I noticed a quicker onset for sure than most other oils I've tried. Yeah, but um, just super nice effects, man. And how much is in each bottle, like uh, dosage wise, in terms um... of like I don't know a, 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 how much. Uh, you use rosin and I use flower flower rosin, um, yeah. hash rosin, and then a little bit of distillate. So, and what have you got growing currently? Then what's going in your next batch of medicine? Um, at the moment, I've got a, a run of zawar on. Yeah. But that won't be for the medicine. That's all going to get washed for hash resin. Um, mm -hmm. So it's going to be... I'm thinking my next lot of medical flower that I'm going to do will possibly be the eucalyptus from yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think I'll do a full a full run of that um, for flower and to make some oil with. Yeah. Um. 
And then it'll be a case of searching through the Turk Town tickets and your is it the fermented berry skunk or berry skunk? Yeah, rotten berry skunk. Smart. Yeah, that's the one. I want to find a, a washer in that, if I'm honest. Yeah. So I can knock some people's head off with some proper hash rosin dabs. <laughs> well, I think uh, the blueberry skunk would be a nice one to run for it too. If you can find a washer Ooh. and the turps with that, that'd be banging because that is super nice. I've made hash from some of the blueberries I've done in the past and it's real nice. Right, okay. Star 23 as well. Um, I reckon that should be good medicine, but I, I don't... I haven't seen anybody wash it yet. I don't know what's, what what it washes like. It doesn't well, seem we'll to... find out. It's got quite an old school look to it, the flower. Not the most like visibly resinous that I've seen so far compared to some. But then that doesn't matter really. I, I don't, it, it matters, I, I guess, in terms of percentage returns. But in, yeah, if you just smoke the flower... Great. If you smoke the flower, that that doesn't matter. Like the most de- the most devastating potency I've ever experienced in well in anything came from flower. But I was going to say, yeah, you know, it was ESB haze that was UK grown outdoors. Um, probably cut too early by my friend, um, but nonetheless, it was just ridiculous. It was like literally like paralyzing uh, after 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 real three puffs. It was it was like. I was. I just clearly remember thinking, this is like too strong for cannabis. This is like not, you know, it's beyond wow. strong. You know, it's crazy. And I was, I was still a bit young then and a bit naive. And I was thinking, ah, oh, why don't we do this indoors? Imagine if this is like this shit outdoors because it had no visible resin on it. That's why I got onto that. It, you could see nothing on it. It looked like shit. You looked like the worst UK uh-huh. outdoor shit you could imagine. And no no fucking visible resin on it you could shine a fucking light on it and nothing come back um but just mental potency and there i was thinking oh yeah well we do this indoors and run it nice and it unlights under lights this is going to be like fucking off the charts but that potency we won't replicate it indoors <laughs> not like that right so it's something to do with the outdoor conditions i think yeah UVB no matter how hard you try you can never compete with mother nature no, that stuff was mental. I would like to find something like that again, but you know, obviously there's like loads of potency, but this is we're talking about something completely different now. <laughs> <laughs> A proper find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think uh yeah, as I say, what didn't really turn out to be a keeper indoors. But anyway, Mark, man, it's been fucking good chatting to you. I know you've been busy uh making your oil. Is there anything else? You wanted to to talk about today? Um, not today, if I'm honest. But if we do it again, I'll be more prepared next time. I'm gonna write a bit down and and have a think before, and I've rushed myself more than anything. Um, but yeah, I'll be definitely have you, down. Have you got cuttings? I just wanted to ask: Have you got cuttings of the two skunks that you made uh, that you grew last time that you sent me flower? I have got a little cut. Well, it's a uh, monster cropped it and it's revegging now. Um, so I cut. I, I will have cuttings in another month or so of the the, the fruity pineapple one. Okay, yeah, they're both nice. They're both nice. Um, I don't think I really got a favourite. You know, they're just both nice in their own way. Um, that that it, it's it it's not. It's just. Choice of turp, isn't it? More than yeah, just depends. Quality whether. of flower. It's yeah. just what flavor you prefer. I like mixing American them as well. Them. I like mixing them uh, as well. Fucking smoking the tea together. <laughs> you can always find a good blend, you know. Yeah, I hundred yeah. percent agree with that. I do the same with dabs as well. I'll, I'll you you can mix certain flavors and and find a proper treat. Well, anyway, fucking big shout out to Milsey because that's the originator, man. Fucking nice for Milsey for doing that. You've got some <laughs> proper medicine into the UK and you've got some to me because it's definitely made me happy this last couple of weeks. <laughs> um, I need to get some more if you see this possible, really, as well. <laughs> and, um, yeah, hopefully as well, other extractors. I'll shout out... Um, Chudder Brothers, I don't think they're too active anymore, but they've got a nice page on on um, Instagram. 
they've made some nice rosin in the past with uh, some of the S line, I think it was, which they sent me up some of. They also kindly sent me like a rig to smoke it on too, which was super generous of them. Um, oh. you, you've got the Country Club official guys. Uh, I don't know if you know those. They're in the UK. And they, um, I've not tried their RKS rosin, but it looks fucking so nice. And they said it's just absolute fire. I have tried their strawberry skunk case rosin, and that is just so nice. It's unbelievable. It's super, super nice. That comes mm -hmm. to my genetics as well, both of them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then we've got BPF extracts. He's about to start growing some of my stuff, which would be awesome because he makes, he's won a lot of awards in the UK um, with his extracts, his like solvent based extracts. Um, and he makes RSO, which I must shout him out for because he makes RSO and gives it away practically, well, at cost, like, you know, it's super cheap to people um, who need it. And he's helped me out a bunch of times when I've needed that RSO for various things. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to when he makes some RSO with the older gene pool and gets like a full complement of cannabinoids and terps. And yeah. try some of that because I know it would be even better than what he already puts out now. So yeah, just what I want to see is more people doing the kind of work you're doing as well, man. Um, do you ever remember Jeff Ditchfield? Have you ever heard of that guy? The name rings a bell. Jeff Ditchfield of Bud Buddies, yeah. He was like a bit of a pioneer in the RSO and the UK oil scene for patients back in the day, you know? He had a, I think he had the first coffee shop in the UK. It's called Beggar's Belief in Real. Yes. Um, yeah. But he did a lot, a lot of work, man, helping people out uh, with RSOs. And it got to the point where he was only helping children. He had just too many people asking him for help. And he wasn't able to meet the demand, you know. And yeah, he cures. I know for a fact over a hundred children helped over, well over a hundred wow. children with his uh, RSO and stuff. So I'm ho I'm hoping to kind of help other people to do stuff like that, you know. And with my yeah. genetics, that'd be awesome. The possibilities are endless with them genetics, brother. I really mean that. Well, yeah, yeah. You know, we you grew three and found three excellent ones, you know. Well, you grew eight and, yeah, you had the males. But of the females, you found three excellent ones, all with certainly the two you sent and working with now got excellent medicinal properties, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's important for people. I, I'm sure this is just like, I'm sure that, you know, this whole mental health thing that is in the world today, as it were, uh, a lot of people, and it, I just think it's people basically suffering the sim uh, symptoms of, you know, the shit fucking society and the way the world is now. It hasn't been until this century or so, you know. It's yeah. never been as fucked up as this. So can't bother going into all of that now. But fact is, for whatever reasons, there's a lot more people depressed, anxious, unhappy. And I'll tell you, these genetics will make you happier than any fucking thing else out there now. If you've got a nice blueberry that is so day brightening and life enhancing, mood improving, it just, I've noticed it with yours, what you've said me, improved, and I'm not even somebody who's like uh, suffers in that way, but without doubt, it's improved my mood anyway. It's elevated my mood and made me more, just better, happier. And for, I was, don't know if I mentioned it to you, I've got one variety that I found last year, which I've not released seeds of because I don't even have many and I want to work it further. But it was just, I remember raving about it when I was showcasing it last year out there. But it will just like wipe out the fucking medical anti antidepressant type establishment, medical establishment, you know. If people had access to that, they would, I'm sure there'd be no need for anything fucking chemical based out there because it, you know, smile, the old time one variety called Smile. It was like that, but even fucking on another level. That was called Smile because it made people happy, obviously, and smile. And they called it Prozac in a seed. Well, I, I never liked that too much because uh, I just think it's far superior anyway to Prozac. And I, you just should be making that association with it. But it will wipe out that whole fucking field. 
there's so many people today on fucking cocktails of like different fucking antidepressants and stuff. I've got plenty of people I know in reality, you know, who are like that. And these medicines don't even fucking help them. They're changing them constantly. They're going back for, you know, and it's making them worse in many cases and giving them all kinds of new shit. And I'm like, fucking hell. What I had last year was like so far superior even to smile. that I was like, if people just had this, access to this they would that, that that they could just chuck i'm sure they could just chuck those fucking meds away because it made you feel so fucking good irrespective of how you felt before you know it made yeah. you feel so motivated so driven so upbeat the flavor was so everything about it was amazing the high was amazing the flavor was amazing and i literally just wanted to smoke it from the minute i woke up to the fucking time i went to bed it was so <laughs> fucking nice and yeah, I'm sure if people had access to something like that, then that would just eliminate the need for so much of these fucked up drugs people are taking now. So that is one I want to work with in the future with people doing medicine type uh, products like yourself. Something that not just, uh, you know, cures the body, but it helps the mind as well in these fucking depressing times, you know? It's like a fucking you know, herbal happiness, it's fucking natural, yeah. and not fucking, you know what I mean? Some artificial yeah. fucked up chemical stimulant shit that, for the most part, I've just seen damages people worse. Oh, it does, 100%. Or you end up on another three other medicines to deal with the side effects that the first yeah. one create. Yeah, yeah. And, and what's it. the side effect with, with flour? You eat more and you sleep. Yeah, yeah. Both not bad things. Well, anyway, Mark, it has been fucking awesome chatting to you today, bro. Um, and definitely come back on again in the future. And One Source Farms on Instagram. The thing is, yeah. now it's annoying me that I know it's going to be harder for me to get flour off you because I'm telling too many people about you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll save you some, I promise. <laughs> But uh, uh, it's awesome, man. But yeah, and hopefully, I, I just want more people as well uh, to in the UK to start doing what you're doing because, yeah, it's great what you are doing. <laughs> it's it good shows to see so many positive you. reviews, you know? Yeah, yeah, it shows with results, definitely. Well, thanks again, Mark, and um, okay. definitely, definitely come on again. Yeah, one hundred percent, brother. All right. Cheers, everybody, for listening, and we'll catch you on the next episode. And whenever Rich hears, he can just cut it. <laughs> Cheers, bro. Yeah, that's it done. If Rich, I don't know what he's doing. He's busy in the background. Maybe he's not listening. I think today, so <laughs> he'll. Uh, I think if we just cut off, I don't know exactly how it'll work. Maybe I'll message him on Telegram, and then. He'll just chop it where we left off and you'll be able to put that out really quick because there's no editing required because we got some visuals from you, which is great. Whereas normally we have to add some like shit fucking gaming or something in the background <laughs> when no one wants to be on camera. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, Mark, if you want to cut off, man, your end, you can do, buddy. I'm just going to message him to let him know we're finished. And um, yeah, yeah no thanks, worries, thanks very much for coming on, bro. Been a pleasure, Robert. I'll speak to you soon. All right, buddy. You take care, man. Yo.